from today uh, I will give a lecture regarding the column chapter 2 okay so uh, I spend three weeks to cover uh, columns let's begin you have already learned chapter 1 or you will learn uh, chapter 2 columns so I'd like to compare uh, chapter 1 and chapter 2 this is uh, chapter 1 mm -hmm. in chapter 1 we have the rigid bar so we consider just one spring so we make real column into some uh, simple column with a rigid bar there is no deformation on this member okay in order to solve uh, this problem you use some uh, algebraic uh, equation simple equation okay equilibrium equation something you use that one in chapter two we consider the realist column realist column means uh, consider this member is uh, deformable, it's realistic, so uh, deformable column. In this uh, deformable column, how many degree of freedom does it have? Yeah, infinite DOF system, degree of freedom system. Okay, so every form, point we have the deformation, different deformation. Okay, so infinite DOF problem. So in order to uh, solve this infinite DOF problem we have to use differential equation as m internal moment equal minus ei y2 prime so we have to use uh, differential equation in this the realist column in chapter one uh, if you remember uh, we get the critical load and post buckling pass and equilibrium pass right uh, in this chapter 2, some realist column, uh, we firstly consider classical column theory, last range, and inelastic column, and design curves. So, the chapter 1 is the we assume uh, the simple problem so simple example, and then we get some idea of general uh, behavior. Chapter 2 is a realist column, uh, behavior, okay, and then uh, you also uh, learn uh, uh, design equation. So you spend three weeks to cover chapter two. Uh, let's look at the introduction. This is a uh, pin and the column. At the bottom is pin, at the top is ruler. So if pin increase, then if this column is perfect, perfect uh, means there is no initial imperfection and uh, the load applied at the center of this member so no eccentricity then uh, we can uh, draw p delta curve like this if perfect column the load increase like that at this point suddenly buckle like this so this point is called bifurcation point if you remember uh, also it is called PCR, okay? critical load. From here to here, we call it the fundamental pass is stable equilibrium, stable equilibrium. And then over the value of PCR here, this pass is unstable equilibrium, okay? Somebody touch, then this ball go away. That means if this column is perfect and the load is somewhere here, somebody touch, then it buckle. So unstable equilibrium. This uh, PCR point is, we call it uh, neutral equilibrium. If uh, the imperfect column, that means there is initial some imperfection, huh? initial deformation, then as soon as uh, P applies, delta occur like that. Okay? So, when uh, P does not apply, it always has some initial uh, deformation. As P increase, delta increase like that. If there is some uh, larger initial deformation, the curve looks like this. So we call it imperfect column. So initially crooked uh, means initially some deformed. Okay, essential load case. Then is imperfect column. Perfect column is ideally straight and uh, no load eccentricity and we also cover in this chapter 2 or uh, this curve uh, this one is the actual force and then this is uh, slender insulation this uh, column strength curve if the column is very short it failed by yielding this range if the column length is somewhat uh, <clears throat> in medium 
then the column buckle in elastically okay so it is this range is inelastic buckle range this one if column is uh, slender enough the column behavior is elastic buckling so uh, I will uh, explain this uh, kind of things in later in detail uh, let's look at perfect column first if you remember the, the content of uh, uh, chapter one in perfect column we can get PCR right yeah. and then we also get the buckling mode so perfect column is there is no initial some deformation no road eccentricity so p applied then p increase in order to get the pcr we consider some deformed shape after buckling it deformed so we consider that deformed shape in order to get the pcr and then we take out this part like this it is a free body diagram if P applied here, the, we have reaction at the bottom, P. And then you have P here, from this P, P here. And then it deformed like this. That means you have internal moment like this, because it is deformed. It has a slope. That means internal uh, moment. So in order to make uh, the shape like this, the moment direction should be counterclockwise like that and internal moment equal minus ei y2 prime y2 prime means minus ei d square y dx square derivative regarding x second derivative is y2 prime you see the uh, the sign is minus because the x as x increase rate of slope decrease so in the case we put the minus sign from equilibrium equation, uh, if you take the moment here, minus m internal moment, right? Then p times this y, this moment equilibrium, equal to zero, right? m internal moment equal minus ei y2 prime. It is a differential equation. So in order to get the PCR, we have to solve this differential equation. If we let p over ei equal to k square then this equation is y2 prime k square y equal zero so if you get the solution to satisfy this uh, differential equation is this y equal a sine kx plus b cosine kx maybe you learn this solution uh, math class second year yeah in undergraduate study so uh, a sine kx plus b cosine kx that is solution of this uh, differential equation if you take the second derivative and then put these values here you can realize this equation satisfies so you have two unknown a and b so you need two equation how to get the two equation is uh, you can use the boundary condition as you see this at the bottom y displacement is zero at the top also y displacement equal zero so you can write y zero when x equal zero y equal zero when x equal l y equal zero right so if you input zero for x then this one sine 0 equal 0 right cosine 0 equal 1 so you got b b equal 0 from this equation and then if you use the boundary condition y l then b equal 0 so this term uh, disappeared okay and then a sine k l equal 0 okay so in order to satisfy <coughs> this equation we have uh, two uh, different uh, solutions. One is a equal zero, then this equation zero, right? So a equal zero means this term is zero, a equal zero. That means y equal zero, regardless of the, uh, the value of x. So that means undeformed shape. So there is no deformation. So that means this fundamental pass. In order to get the PCR, we consider this kind of a deformation. So, A equal zero is not solution, <coughs> real solution. So, 
sign KL must be zero. Uh, in order to satisfy this equation, KL equal m pi, right? n equal 1, 2, blah, blah, blah. So k equal n pi over l. What is k? k scale equal p over ei, right? Yeah. If you uh, plug in uh, this one, then p equal l square, n square, pi square ei, right? If you make a square, uh, and then you can get this equation. If n equal 1, you get p c r 1 so l pi square e i over l square if n equal 2 you get 4 pi square e i over l square okay so among these critical values the minimum one is called critical load another term is eigenvalue uh, eigen means the unique uh, unique value critical load okay, now you get the value over here p c r and then let's consider the mode shape. Another term is eigenvector. Your displacement equation is y equal a sine kx because of p equal 0. So if mode shape corresponding to critical load pcr1, that means the first mode shape is a sine kx. And then you have to plug in k value here. What is your k value? Here. first mode shape n equal 1 so k equal pi over l if you input this value here then a sine pi over l x okay? that is the first mode shape then what is second mode shape second mode shape is n equal 2 here 2 if you draw this mode shape is like this first mode shape looks like this mode shape 1 because x equal 1 then value equal 0 right x equal l here then sine pi equal 0 right so then how about x equal l over 2 huh? point this middle point l over 2 then sine pi over 2 okay what is sine pi over 2 is equal to 1 right so a a we don't know the a value huh? but here we have the uh, biggest uh, value at the middle so mode shape like that sine curve the second mode shape is like this it is a buckling shape. Uh, so far, uh, uh, you learned how to get PCR from a differential equation and then corresponding mode shape at the perfect color. Okay, let's look at the imperfect color. If uh, a column has initial some crookedness, initial deformation, that is the imperfect color. Or a column has uh, eccentric load, then it is also imperfect color. In this case, this column has okay, eccentric load like that. The eccentric the value is E. This imperfect column, we cannot get PCR. Huh? Do you remember? So we have to do road diffraction analysis. And also we can get the magnitude of diffraction. So let's solve uh, this problem. Firstly, you have to draw this deformed shape. Uh, and then P applied here, uh, P applied here. Okay. Yeah. And then you take out this part, free body diagram. Then P applied here, this P applied here. And then you have internal moment. M internal moment is equal to minus EI Y to apply. This is E, this is Y. E is original eccentricity, Y equal deformed shape due to P. So if you uh, write down some equilibrium equation regarding the moment, uh, then M internal moment counterclockwise, so minus M internal, and then P times EY. P times EY equal to 0. So M internal moment equal minus EY Y to prime like this. And then divide by EY, then you have this equation. Then red again, P over EY equal to K square. The Y to prime, K square Y. And then if you move this term to right hand side, then minus K square E. Right? Yeah. So you will get the homogeneous solution and particular solution. Homogeneous solution means this one, y to prime plus k square y equal to zero. That is homogeneous solution, right? Right hand side minus e k square e. So from this one, we can get the particular solution. So general solution y equal 
homogeneous solution plus particular solution. So from this one, you can get homogeneous solution. A sine kx plus B cosine kx. Okay. Ah. And then uh, particular solution is that if you input something here, if you get this minus k scale e, then that is particular solution. The what is solution? Why particular solution is minus e? If you take the second derivative equal zero, so this term is zero, and then uh, you can input minus e instead of y, right? Then k square minus e yeah uh, left hand side is equal to right hand side so it is a particular solution so yp equal minus e so general solution is homogeneous solution plus particular solution then y equal a sine kx b cosine kx minus e that is general solution still we have two unknown so we need two equation to solve this how to get two equation from the boundary condition y equal 0 y l equal 0 now y 0 here y 0 equal to 0 right yeah because there is no y displacement when x equal l uh, that means y l equal 0 there is no y displacement yes we have a two boundary condition so if you put the uh, x equal 0 here, then sine 0 equal 0, right? So b cosine kx cosine 0 equal 1. So b minus e equal to 0. So b equal e. Okay, we get the b. The another boundary condition y l then a sine kl plus b equal e, right? E cosine kl minus e equal to 0, right? We get the another equation. From this equation, you can get the a value, right? So a equal, if you move this term right hand side, divide by a sine kl, then you can get this equation. 1 minus cosine kl, sine kl, e. That is e. So now you get the a, this one, you get the b, right? If you input this value into this equation, then you get this equation. That is deflection. What is y? y equal this one from here to here. Uh, y does not include e, okay? Uh, from here to here, this y. Yeah, so let's find out the maximum deflection. Where maximum deflection occur at the middle height, right? So x equal l over 2. So if you input x equal l over 2, then sine k l over 2 right cosine k l over 2 minus l equal e if you uh, do you know there is some relationship this cosine and sine regarding that half angle equation okay so cosine k l equal 1 minus e sine square k l over 2 sine k l equal 2 sine k l over 2 cosine k l over 2 i think you have learned uh, this equation in your high school uh, study, right? So if you input this relationship here instead of cosine kl, you input this one here, okay? Sine kl, you input here because the other term is the half angle sine kl over 2, cosine kl over 2, okay? So this is the original angle not half angle so we would like to unify into half angle terms using half angle the equation so uh, input this one and this one here then you can get uh, this value yeah. then you delete this term uh, each other then you can get the cosine k over 2 uh, here sine square k over 2 here you have additional cosine k over 2 if you make the the same denominator of cosine k over 2 then cosine square k over 2 that is 1 1 so 1 over cosine k over 2 like that minus 1 e. do you understand like this cosine k L over 2 1 over cosine k over 2 can be right as second k l over 2 right then that maximum deflection is here this one right 
So total deflection, you have original deformed E, okay, eccentricity E. So total deflection, delta maximum is Y maximum here plus original uh, eccentricity E. Add, then this minus term disappeared, then you get the E second K over 2. If you investigate uh, this term, what is E? It is original eccentricity. Then what is second K over 2? It is called amplification factor. It must be greater than 1.0. Amplification factor. If we are doing the learning analysis, we can get this amplification factor. We have some deflection that is greater than E. If we do the first order analysis, uh, such as some course uh, in undergraduate, then deflection is E, but this is we are doing uh, the learning analysis. We are studying structural stability. We consider this kind of a linear deformation. Uh, total is a linear deformation. So original eccentricity, uh, second K over 2 is called amplification factor. A, F. Amplification factor. Uh, amplification factor equals second KL over 2. What KL over 2? Uh, L over 2, you remember K square equal P over EI. So this is just K equal square root 2 P over EI. If you multiply uh, top and bottom square root to PE, PE means Euler buckle load. In order to uh, get the simple equation, we multiply top and bottom the same value, square root PE, like this. Then uh, this PE is square root pi square EI L square, Euler buckle load, right? EI is here, square root P equal here, this P equal here. Then EI, EI cancel together L L square cancel together so E2 and square root pi square means pi square root P P E yeah so uh, we can write down this amplification factor in terms of P over P E this is uh, first order deflection E second order deflection the maximum equal E second K L okay yeah. E amplification factor so some amplification factor is AF can be written in terms of P over P E. AF second pi over two square root two P over P E. As you see, if P over P E equal to zero, that means there is no load applied at the column. So this term equal zero, right? So second means one over cosine. Cosine zero is what? 1. So amplification factor 1. It is not amplified because actual force equal 0. If P equal PE, what happened? It buckle. In this equation, P equal P means cosine 1 over cosine pi over 2. Cosine pi over 2 equal 0. 1 over 0, that means infinite. So when this column buckle, the deflection is infinite. So as you see, like that, infinite. Amplification factor is infinite. Delta maximum equal uh, first order uh, deformation and amplification factor, right? If we divide by L, left and right hand side, like that, and then you can draw uh, regarding load uh, eccentricity, load increase, and then you can draw uh, delta maximum over L deformation. If you determine the eccentricity, this eccentricity, let's assume 0 0.001, then you begin here, and then if P O P increase, you can get delta maximum over L. Then you get this curve. So you can get the deformation, second order deformation from this equation. If you have some larger eccentricity, you can get uh, this kind of curve. If you don't have any eccentricity, that means zero. Then it is a perfect color. So you will go to this up and then like that huh? this curve so uh, you can get the uh, moment also 
moment equal minus e y e i y two prime. If you take the second derivative, this is y. If you take the second derivative, you can get k square here, and then you get the this equation. Maximum moment uh, occur at mid height. So uh, you can input l over two for x, then l over two here, l over two here, like that. If you make a simple this equation, you can get this second k over two. This is amplification factor. And the remaining one is e i k square e. What is e i k square? e i k square equal p. So this is p e. What is PE? PE, that is first order moment. You see, if you do first order analysis, P times E is first order moment. But the second order moment, you have the additional moment, this moment. That is, uh, if you do second order analysis, you can get this one. That is amplification, fact, first order moment and second order moment, like this. Let's meet again soon.